Hi everyone, it's Peter Zellums, Greenie Flicks, Adventure 8, and we're out, out and about again. Uh, a lot of construction going on around Sydney. I'm not sure we can actually hear what's going across the harbour there, but anyway. Today is going to be a video. Today's video. Today's video, again, it's, it's in the bag. We've got a Leica monochrome, a M10 monochrome. And not sure you can see, but it's got a red filter on it. So that's going to be interesting. Now, what else have I got in the bag? I've got my Leica M10R here as well. Both of these have got 21 millimeter lenses on them. So this one's got the Summerlux f1.4, 21 millimeter. And this one has got the Elmerit. 21 millimeter f 2.8 so they're not this is not a lens comparison but what I'll be doing is my aim today is actually to photograph buildings architectural type photographs using the perspective control that's available in the software on the monochrome m10 monochrome and also the m10r <laughs> I believe it's also available on the M10P as well, but there'll be some updates in the video here. So, I'll be taking a few shots around here and around the city. It'll be interesting to see what sort of impact we get with the red filter, as well as what sort of post-processing we can do later on in Lightroom as well. To activate perspective control on these cameras, it's really a quite easy process. Just a matter of turning it on, pressing menu and then if you haven't got it on the front screen going into the menu settings then you can find perspective control right now I've got that on but it would normally be off and then you just flick it on to the on position and that's it that's as simple as the process is if you're taking photographs uh, just using the rangefinder perspective control won't be operating but as soon as you use live view get another frame line that actually appears in the viewfinder here which either leans forwards or backwards and uh, that gives you a perspective of what the frame will be seen and then it's a matter of just taking the shot that's it that's how simple it is what actually is created is a JPEG file straight away so you'd be able to review the result and see whether you got what you expected but it also produces a raw file with all the perspective controls in there and I'll show you in Lightroom later on what you click so you can actually get a full raw file with the perspective control applied as opposed to in Lightroom later on if you apply your perspective control you actually end up losing some of the image as well you will see
right, let's have a look in Lightroom. I've got two photographs, one here in the office and one also out on location. The first one here, the photograph was taken with perspective control off in the camera and therefore the raw file here is looking much the same as the JPEG file here as far as its perspective is concerned. Out in the field photograph was with the perspective control on for the Leica M10 monochrome. So the raw file that comes in, you see it with the perspective control off right now. And the JPEG file that was produced within camera has already the perspective control applied. So you see a, quite a significant difference between the two. So if we go into develop, we see that. If we go into the right side here where all the modifications can occur, we look at transformation. And in the transformation in the top left hand corner here, you've got these little lines here. If you press that, momentarily you see the crop area that the camera saw and it applied straight away the constraints in the perspective control. So we basically see the raw file as you would see the JPEG file. If we look at the JPEG file now, we press that same little icon there. It has no implication whatsoever to the photograph because the perspective control was already applied and then converted into a JPEG file. So there's no surprises there. Other thing to note, the raw file came in as a 40 megapixel file. So 7864 pixels by 5200. And the JPEG file, 7840 by 5184 pixels. So pretty much the same. So when the in-camera body perspective control is applied, the raw file still ends up being the full size. 7864 by 5200 pixels, which is great. So you've got a lot more file to actually work with. If we look at the other photograph that was taken, and now we'll do the same transformation, but we're going to be using it in post-processing as opposed to in-camera. And let's see what happens to the file size. So there's our file. If we press that, nothing's going to happen uh, because there's no in-camera adjustment to the perspective control. But we can change the perspective control now using vertical, for example. So the file size is still the same. But once we apply constrained crop, it's going to take an internal crop of that and all of a sudden your file size has become smaller 4399 by 6653. If we go to the JPEG file you'll see that that's actually a larger file because it hasn't been cropped already. So that's one distinct advantage of using the in-camera perspective control because you end up still keeping your 40 megapixel file here. Well I hope you found this video interesting. Uh, the perspective control is pretty useful. Um, it saves a little bit of work rather than doing it all in post-processing that you can actually take the shot while you've got the scene for that shot. I think the 21mm is a great lens for both uh, street photography as well as architecture and um, obviously monochrome is great to give you that, that, uh, that dynamic feel, that black and white um, brutalist, I think they call it brutalist feel, where you've got lots of extreme contrast, shape and texture and tone. Yeah. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, then give it a thumbs up. It helps support the channel. If it's the first time to my channel, then please do subscribe. Please press notifications, and that way you'll be notified when the next video is out. More than likely to be photography because everyone's in lockdown right now in Sydney. So not much travel, but anyway, there's a lot of subject material around Sydney to photograph as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers, bye.